We used those strikes. We did get a fair jury, but that wasn't good enough. So the judge removed the counterclaim in the middle of the trial. He said, we're not going to let the jury decide that now. He put that in his back pocket for later. Then he withheld evidence from the jury That's right. for no reason, no legitimate legal reason. And when all of that was done, the jury came out unanimous. They deliberated for how long? 15 hours. Wow. But in the judge's order, he said they deliberated for a few minutes. Uh, that's a factually incorrect. <laughs> All right, Jeremy! All right. Is everybody ready? We're ready. Yes. First of all, I want to thank everybody for coming today. Nice and loud. Use your outside voice, Jeremy. I will. Thank you, Don. First of all, I want to thank everybody for coming today. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. This just proves that even with tyranny, a community can stand up together in the face of that and say something is wrong. And whatever you think that we are, elites are not in control. The people are. The grassroots are. Thank you. Today, we um, we went ahead and we filed formal misconduct complaint allegation ethics allegations against a sitting federal judge, Good. Good. Yay. 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 Good. Judge B. Lynn Windmill. Good. And one of the reasons it's very important to do that is uh, we have a message from Judge Windmill. Actually, just five days after the recent inauguration, that he will be retiring. And I think that might explain why he did what he did in our case. One final hurrah for the left, for the cultural elite, for the people who want to redefine this country. But you know what we're going to do? We are going to be on his mind when he's at retirement in the Bahamas because this is a stain on his record. That's right, yeah. That's right. Thank you, Jeremy. I was told, I was told not to do this by basically every lawyer that I have talked to and even senior counsel across the country have told me, do not do this. Do not pursue misconduct complaint allegations against a sitting federal judge, particularly one whom you may end up back in his courtroom, because even though he's retiring, you know what he did? He retained jurisdiction of my case. Wow. So here's what I have to say to Judge Windmill. Bring it on. <laughs> this doesn't come from emotion. You know, I'm a lawyer, and I look at the facts. Sorry. I'm a lawyer and I look at the facts. And every one of those lawyers that I spoke to who said, do not do this, you know what they also told me? Yes, of course it was misconduct. So why would they tell me that? Because they say, you gotta play the game. Judges talk. You're gonna end up in other courtrooms with other judges and, and, and they're gonna be influenced by the fact that you have previously filed misconduct allegations against a sitting federal court judge. Don't do it. I would rather not be a lawyer. I would rather risk losing my license by being honest. Amen. And saying that by this transcript that I have from this case, this judge attempted to rig a jury. What does it say? 
Well, for one thing, it says that one juror said that they were prejudiced. But when we followed up on that, well, what do you mean by prejudice? That should be the end of the questioning right there, first of all, in any courtroom. Yep. But that wasn't. So we asked the judge, we're sorry, why are we still here with this juror? Oh, well, well, they only said prejudice one time. That's what the judge said, and it's in this transcript. One time. Prejudice is okay if we say it one time. So then we followed that up. Well, what did you mean? Since we're going to continue with this juror, what do you mean, juror? What do you mean, number 11, with uh, prejudice? Well, I'm biased. Oh, you're biased too, yes. What other words in the English language that would absolutely disqualify any juror for cause could you possibly say, well, yes, I'm very, very prejudiced. I am biased. I cannot be fair. Wow. Wow. But that's okay. The juror was allowed to remain on that jury because we are told they rehabilitated themselves. Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah. maybe what? I'll be fair. Wow. Okay. I guess I could be fair. But it got worse. Then the judge withheld evidence withheld evidence from the court that was legitimate evidence, including death threats, including four separate women that were assaulted going to a Christmas program on my property. And they testified in court, but the judge struck their testimony, videotapes of death threats by neighbors withheld from the jury. And then when all of that was said and done, because we did have some strikes to remove certain jurors, including the ones that had said that they were prejudiced, we were able to have a unanimous jury verdict in our favor on all four counts. After 15 hours of straight deliberations, we won our case unanimous. And nearly every civil trial just requires a majority. We had a unanimous verdict in our favor. Thank you. But that's not good enough. It's not good enough to have a unanimous jury verdict in this country. Now, our case was overturned, but not on appeal. No, it was after the judge gave the case to the jury and didn't like the outcome. He just said, I'm just going to undo the outcome. Federal list 28. Federal list 28. Wow. When they overrule us, it's time. Look, the, yes. thank you, sir. The fact is, we live under the Federalist Papers and the Constitution, and we live under the rule of law. And no one, no judge or no other person, is above the law. No way! No way! No way. end of my legal career. I love that. Let's do that right now. Yeah. Let's end my le my legal career right now with some some lemonade. This is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll all celebrate the end of my my legal career because you know what? I would rather not be a lawyer but keep my integrity. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So when other lawyers are privately whispering to me, well, we all know it was misconduct. Of course it was. What are you doing? Don't do it. The fact is, was it misconduct? Yes. The rule says, was there prejudice? <laughs> Moreover, I'm told that I have an obligation as a lawyer under the ABA rules to report any kind of misconduct. Right. So I'm actually required to do this. And you know, a lot of other lawyers probably should have stepped forward before I did. Yes, yes they, they should have. have. Yes, they should have. Yes. But it's time that we stand up and we say, when things are wrong, we're not going to let them continue with that. Now look, Amen. there are, I've said this before, there are three different travesties that happen here. The first one, wait till this car goes by, sorry. Very simple. What's that? Go on, what's that? I'm going to have to run, guys. But listen, I just want to say this really fast. There are three travesties that happened here today. Well, not here today, but really that have happened over the last few years. This judge, what he stood for, it was the loss of my religious freedom and the religious freedom of my family. It was the loss of my property rights. As a lawyer stood in federal court and actually had the audacity 
with a straight face in front of a federal jury to ask, well, why are people assembled there? Where was there? My land. Right. Why are you asking the question? <laughs> it's my land. So, so they not only took my religious freedom, they took away my property rights. And I think the founding fathers would agree that maybe one of the only other things that is as sacred as, 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 as the freedom to practice your religion, as the right to your property, is probably the right to a trial by a jury of your peers. Yeah, that's and right. when you right. take away that, you don't have a country. Nope. It is time right. that we stand up to, to tyranny and to those people who would stand in the way of the fair and judicious practice of law and adjudication of, of cases in our country. I thank you for all of you. Thank, thank you, you Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you. This, this infamy. And I hope that, that this message doesn't die here. I hope you carry that message to your communities today. That the fact is, this kind of thing is not rare. This is going on all the time. The thing is, people are not standing up to it. We are in a culture war. Yes. <laughs> we did not start this culture war. The culture war came to us. And we are losing that culture war. And the reason we're losing that culture war is simple. Because we go into court, we make our case, we all know it's political and rigged. And then after we lose, we shake hands with the opposition and we all pretend it was a really fair and, and good try. But it's time someone says, look, we know what the process is. It's rigged. And when we see something that is rigged, mm -hmm. when we see prejudice in the court system, we're going to call it out. Yes. 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 We're going to hold them to account. Yes. yes. Yep. And we're going to put pressure on any other judge that thinks that they can get away with this sort of infamy. Amen. Yes. Right. And you know what? I've been ordered not to put Christmas lights on my house. Oh. Oh. I'm I think I am. Thank you. I think I am probably the only American in history who has been banned by a federal court from putting up Christmas lights. It's a hot day today, but you know what? It feels like a day to put up Christmas lights. Thank you. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe to The Christmas Lawyer. That's T-H-E-C-H-R-I-S-T-M-A-S-L-A-W-Y-E-R. That's the Christmas lawyer. Because if you don't, uh, I'm not sure I'm going to make it up here much longer. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.